So guess what? There's finally a way to run some iOS exclusive apps on your Android, even if they never made it to the Play Store. And it's all thanks to this app called Touch HLE. Now, fair warning, it only works with older iOS apps, but hey, I'm not complaining because I finally get to play all those classic games that I never could in the past. Like, do you remember Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, that legendary skateboarding game? Well, it got ported to iOS back in 2010, but never made it to Android. Same with Rain Man 2, another classic 3D platformer. And Fastlane Street Racing, this arcade style racing game that was iOS only in 2009. And there's way more where that came from. Touch HLE even has a whole database showing you which iOS apps might work too. Stick around to the end and I'll show you step by step on how to get it working. I'm not gonna lie, Motorola has some seriously sleek stock widgets and I've always wished I could use them on other Androids. Well, guess what? Someone managed to extract the Moto Widget APK and now you can port it to any Android. So yeah, I'm rocking those same adaptive widgets that show me the date, time, weather, and more at a glance. There's even that iconic circle style clock widget that Motorola has been using for years. And the best part, you can tap on any part of the widgets and it'll open the right app or menu. Plus the weather section is chef's kiss. Oh, and everything's super customizable. You can tweak the shapes, styles, and info to your heart's content. Now, since this is a port, it might not run perfectly on every Android and you might run into a few bugs. But hey, it's free and super easy to use, so no complaints here. And those are just two out of the 15 apps that I'm showing off in this month's episode of the best Android apps for March 2025. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to cut you guys a deal. Last month, you all showed so much love, seriously, thank you, and we were this close to hitting 10,000 likes. So if this video hits 10,000 likes before March ends, I'll bump up April's episode to 20 apps instead of 15. Yeah, more work for me, but more apps for you. So you know what to do, drop a thumbs up and make sure to stick around to the end because as always, I save my favorite app for the very end. Nowadays, there are literally over a billion websites that exist and somehow I'm just visiting the same ones over and over again. I'm tired of it. I want to discover new and useful websites and luckily I can do so with Curio Shuffle. It just got released a few days ago and I absolutely love it because it lets me swipe through a bunch of different websites I can launch and discover. For example, it showed me remove.bg, which lets me automatically remove the background from any image you upload, and it's completely free. Then there's nextflick.tv, which shows you random movie trailers for stuff on Netflix. Super handy when you're not sure what to watch on Netflix. Oh, and there's across.app, which lets you send files to another device just by scanning a QR code. And then there are just some weird, fun websites that it recommends to you, like wandaworld.com, where you can play around with streamers to relax, or theuselessweb.com, which just takes you to random websites every single time you tap the button. Honestly, I can just spend hours just shuffling through all these sites. Oh, and the developer hooked me up too with 100 promo codes for the pro version, which gets rid of all the ads. I'm giving away on my Patreon, so make sure to follow me there, and huge thanks to the developer. Okay, so Google Pixels had this awesome feature called Live Caption, and I've always wished that other Androids had it. Basically, you enable it in the volume panel, and it instantly gives you captions for anything you're watching, even if the video doesn't support it. Plus, you can even translate the subtitles into any language. Well, I found this great alternative called Live Caption. Create a name, I know. It works pretty much the same way too, but it takes it a step further by showing you a second floating window with a translation of the subtitles. Google's version just makes you choose between transcribing or translating. You can't do both at the same time, but this app lets you do both. And I love how it's more discreet with a semi-transparent background, unlike the pixels. The only downside is that it needs to cast your screen to work, which is more of an Android limitation than the app's fault. Just something to keep in mind. Next up, if you've got a printer that can scan documents, you're going to love ScanBridge. It lets you connect to certain printers effortlessly, no drivers needed, put the paper you want to scan in your printer, select the printer in the app, it should show up automatically, then you can tap on the gear icon to change the scan resolution, and then just tap the scan button to start scanning. After a few seconds, you'll see the results, which you can save as a PDF or a picture. It's that easy. 
And for those curious, it uses an ESCL protocol, which is why you can discover printers without needing their drivers. Plus, you can scan multiple documents too and save them all in a single PDF. And for that cherry on top, it's also free and open source. What's not to love? And speaking of printers, since I'm always selling things online, one of the biggest headaches that I deal with is shipping labels. Needing to print them, cut them, and stuff them into plastic sleeves is such a hassle. That's until I started using Munbin's Label Printers, the sponsor to this video. Now these printers are pretty cool because they use this special thermal paper that reacts to heat to create prints. No ink, no toner, no ribbons. Plus, they're an eco-friendly option too. And check this out, even if you fold or crumble a label, Munbin's inkless printer still prints perfectly. No jams, no issues. And no matter what size label you put in, the Munbin print app even auto detects label sizes, which makes everything super convenient. Now, if you need something more portable, Munbin's FunMaker 2-inch label maker is perfect. It's super compact and has a built-in battery that lasts up to eight hours of continuous printing. Plus, despite its small size, it prints insanely sharp images, even if you're printing something with many tiny details. And some examples of things you can print include food or document expiry dates, name cards, category tags, brand logos, and warnings for offices, badgery, DIY, small business stuff, organization, etc. On top of that, both printers also support wireless printing via Bluetooth, so you can print straight from your phone whether you're on Android or iOS. On the 402B though, you can even take it further and print from your computer too. It even allows you to print via a USB-C cable for extra flexibility. So yeah, if you're looking for affordable, easy to use label printers, Munbin's got you covered. I'll drop the link at the top of the description. Definitely check them out. If you're looking to step up your Instagram game or just wanna make your pictures stand out more, check out Text Behind Image Editor. It lets you create this cool effect where text appears behind the subject of your image. It makes the whole thing pop and it's super easy to use. You can add multiple text layers, change fonts, sizes, spacing, colors, and even place text in front of the subject for an even cooler effect. The basic features are free, but there are ads and some stuff is locked behind a paywall like certain fonts or the ability to change the subject or the background color. Still, it's a great app to play around with. Oh, and the developer also hooked me up with 20 promo codes for the full lifetime version, which I'm giving away on my Patreon as well. And they expire in May, so hurry up if you want one. So nothing just leaked their next phone, the Phone 3A, before launch. Classic, right? And with that, I figured it was the perfect time to show off another nothing-inspired app. Meet the N Keyboard. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's a keyboard designed to match nothing's aesthetic. The letters and some icons are dotted, and it's got that clean white and red theme, or black and red if you're in dark mode. Honestly, it works surprisingly well too, especially since it's based on Google's open source Latin IME keyboard. So it's got pretty much most of the same features as Gboard, but with that nothing inspired look. It's sleek, it's functional, and it's just cool. So if you want a fresh keyboard, definitely give this one a try. Now let's talk about the Galaxy S25. I know, I know, the Galaxy S25 series dropped last month and a lot of people are like, meh, it's the same phone. But in my review, I dug into a bunch of new stuff most reviewers didn't even mention. Shameless plug, I'll leave that video in the cards if you wanna check it out. Anyway, with Galaxy S25 Live Wallpaper, you can get those same Live Wallpapers on the S25 on any Android device. It's basically just a glowing S, but the way the colors transition is super smooth. Plus, you can tweak the color theme and the speed of the transitions in the settings. It's a small thing, but it adds a nice touch to your home screen. Oh, and the same developer also has an app for the Galaxy S24 live wallpapers, so if you prefer that instead, I'll leave that in the description too. And since we're on the Samsung train, let's talk about One UI Gallery. Someone managed to port the One UI Gallery app or something extremely similar so that us non-Galaxy users can get in on the action. Now, I'll be honest, it's pretty bare bones compared to the original. You won't get any of the fancy Galaxy AI editing tools or face recognition features, but it's still super clean and fast. It loads all your media in seconds, and it even has the private safe tool for hiding your sensitive stuff. Oh, and there's this random feature too that generates images with quotes. 
It's pretty random and it's not groundbreaking whatsoever, but it's still a nice gallery app. Next up is Gigatext, and it does one thing really well. It lets you blow up text on a blank background so you can send a message without actually speaking. Perfect for loud places like concerts, bars or festivals, or even quiet places like boring meetings or classes when you want to send a message to your friends. Sure, there are other apps that do this too, but Gigatext is ad-free, doesn't ask for weird permissions, and has no creepy trackers. There's just an in-app purchase if you want to change the background color or save your entire text history, but it's totally optional. Now let's talk about Toolbox. This app is like a Swiss army knife for your phone. It's packed with random but useful tools, like a URL shortener, a custom roulette wheel, a way to get website domain info on any websites, a speedometer, a sound meter, network info, and even a tool to copy weird text characters your keyboard otherwise wouldn't have. Oh, and you can save YouTube video thumbnails as well. Again, it's a weird mix of random stuff, but you'll probably find at least one tool in here that will be useful. And unlike other Toolbox apps, this one's completely free, open source, and has no ads. All right, this next app is called Left, and it's simple, but kind of unique. It shows you how much time you have left until a specific date using a bunch of dots. It's a cool way to visualize time, but it can also get a little depressing if, say you input your birthday and the age you hope to live to, then it'll show you how many years you might have left with, with each dot representing a year. So that's kind of depressing, but it's cool to see and not so cool at the same time, but hey, it's free and open source, so no complaints. If you're into at-home workouts, you'll love Feel. It's probably the simplest exercise app I've used. You pick a workout, hit start, and it guides you through each exercise with a timer. You can even swipe up for a detailed explanation of the move. Once the timer's up, it moves on to the next exercise. It's super straightforward and perfect for when you just want to squeeze in a quick workout at home. Plus, it's free and open source. Now, for all my fellow snoozers out there, Super Alarm is a game changer. This app forces you to actually do something to turn off your alarm. It could be solving a math problem or playing a memory game, or if you get the full version, you can do a lot more. For instance, it even lets you do a step count goal. It also lets you scan a specific item in your house that you choose the night before, like a chair or your computer, or you can even make it so that you have to shake your phone a certain number of times. It's brutal, but it works. And if you're not into the challenges, you can just use it as a regular alarm. But where's the fun in that? And my favorite app of the bunch is Follow I Get. Shout out to Gara Bhatia Official on Reddit for recommending me this app. If you got an app as well that you want me to check out, drop it on my subreddit, r slash men with the app tag in the title. And I'll give it a look, and if I choose the app, then I'll give you a shout out as well. Anyway, Follow I Get is a simple widget that lets you track your Instagram followers or any other account in real time. Now, obviously, it's not the most powerful app, but I love the idea and it's got potential to expand to other platforms like YouTube or TikTok. Plus, it's free and open source. Okay, so finally, let's go over how to install those older iOS apps or games using Touch HLE. It's not super complicated, but you'll need a few extra apps to make it work. First, you'll need Shizuku, which basically allows you to grant system level permissions to other apps without needing root access. And then you'll need a file manager that can access the Android slash data folder. I'm using Solid Explorer File Manager, but you can use whatever works for you. First, what you need to do is you'll wanna go and open Solid Explorer File Manager and just go through the setup process and grant it all the permissions it needs. Once you do that, you can then open Shizuku and then you'll see an option for pairing. Tap that and grant it the notification permission. From there, it'll ask you to go into the developer options, so tap that and it'll take you there. However, if you don't have the developer options enabled, it'll ask you to enable it. So to do that, just go into your phone settings, tap about phone at the very bottom, software information, and then tap the build number seven times and type in your passcode so that you get a message that says you're now a developer. From there, go back to the Shizuku app and then tap on developer options to get to that menu. 
Once there, scroll down to wireless debugging, turn it on, and then tap pair device with pairing code. Give it a second, and then a notification will pop up so that you can type in the code, and then hit send once you type in the code. Now go back to the Shizuku app and tap on start on the main page. After it's done its thing, you'll see a new menu called authorized applications. So tap that, and then in there, you should see Solid Explorer, so enable that. Boom, step one done. Next, we need to download the iOS app or game you want to run. But before you get too excited, double check to see if it's actually supported by Touch HLE. Head over to their app compatibility database website, I'll link it below, and you'll see a list of apps with ratings from one to five. If it's got five stars, it should work perfectly. One star, yeah, it's probably going to crash and it's broken, so you should avoid those. The higher rated apps are at the top too, so start there. For this example, I'm going to do Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, which has a five star rating. Pay attention to the version number listed there too. That's the one that works best. In my case, it's 1.0.2 that works best. Once you got that, head over to archive.org. I'll leave that link too down below. And then there you'll be able to download the .ipa file. I just use Chrome's feature to find it a lot faster. It's called find a page. And in this case, I type in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. And there you can see it took me to that app. After tapping it, it'll download right away. And then I can head over to the Solid Explorer File Manager app that I downloaded. And in there, I can go to my downloads folder. I can long press it. Then I can tap on the cut icon. And then I can swipe to the right to switch to a new page. From there, I go into the Android folder, data, look for the folder called org.touchhle.android, then go into files, touch HLE apps, and finally hit the orange paste button in the bottom right and you're golden. Finally, open the touch HLE app and you should now see Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 pop up. I can tap it and boom, I can start playing it right then and there, an iOS game on my Android. How cool is that? Again, not every app will work, even if it has a five-star rating, it could still crash on your Android. It varies between device to device. Either way, you can give it a try. That's a wrap on this video. If you made it this far, you're a real one. Tap on this video to check out a playlist of the best episodes of the best Android apps, or click on this video to explore more awesome Android content. Thanks for sticking around to the end, and don't forget to drop a thumbs up so that we can hit that 10,000 like mark. Kapow!